Hello and welcome back to uh, my workshop. I'm Tony, still trying to build this tank. So since my last video, I had a bit of a tech problem with my camera. Um, resolved that now, but anyway, I managed to get the wheels on. Um, I, I sort of I was a bit impatient, just wanted to get them done. So I'm going to try and talk you through um, verbally how I did it. Um, actually, straightforward, but it just it, there's nothing. I couldn't find anything on on the internet or YouTube about how the best way, lots of people talk about wheel installations and then um, all of a sudden they're on and then you have no idea how they went on. Again, not being a seasoned builder or an experienced builder, I had to try and fathom this out for myself. And I'm not saying this is the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it, I'm just saying this is how I did it and I'm happy the way it is. So first things first, um, I kept the tank the right way up. Uh, I've seen people spin the tank over, um, but I'm trying to keep, I've stopped doing that as much as I can and just keep the tank in one position. So um, I went ahead and invested in a small motorbike um, jack um, with the help of my, sort of my socket set and ratchet, just using that to elevate the tank up. This sits perfectly underneath the hub and allows me to increase the height. And this jack sits underneath here perfectly. So what I ended up doing is uh, once I had all the torsion bars fitted, I took the double wheels um, and I just balanced them precariously, if you like, on the axles, not pushed them straight on, just sat them on the outside. So we're just sitting on it. And I did that for all four of the double wheels. And that allowed me then to take the single wheel or the smaller double wheel and position that underneath with this fully elevated. And this goes up another probably six inches fully elevated and managed to just sit that on the shorter of the axles and did the same for each one of these four wheels and then gradually just nursed them into position. Now they're all beautifully in position, they're all rolling as they should do. I've also subsequently um, taken the jack away and did a bit of a bench roll test and they all roll lovely and I put some obstacles underneath and, and the torsion bar system is working really well. So I'm really, really pleased with um, how that's gone. <laughs> so the next step for me is uh, installing the uh, idler wheel and the assembly. Um, and then I'm going to go on and do the sprocket, but I've got to paint that, clean it and paint it first. Um, and then I've got to clean up these hubcaps because um, as you can see that through the machining process, they're actually quite quite rough. Um, and looking at uh, what I've seen of, sort of my studies of this tank, that wouldn't appear. That's more of So I'm going to try and use the basic tools I've got in my workshop. I don't have a lathe or anything like that, but I'm going to use just basically cleaning this up with some sandpaper and uh, just to get try and get smooth this off a little bit more. Um, and then obviously that's going to be painted. Um, and uh, the, the idle wheels themselves I'll install. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'm going to sort of get myself set up, get all the nuts and bolts as usual, ready for uh, doing this part. And then we'll, uh, we'll come back and follow it step by step. So the, today is all about the wheels, idler wheel. I've installed this one, but I will go through in real time doing the other side. But I thought, but I've done the hubcap, prepared that for painting. Um, and what I want to do is get the two sprocket wheels prepared for painting. So I've gone ahead and I've cleaned up the uh, sprocket wheels to take all the residue off them as I've done in the past. Um, and I've made up this particular one here, but the hubcap still needs to be made. So what I thought I'd do is just um, go through some of the things that I've discovered with preparing these. Again, it's nothing to do with the manufacturer. It's just typical sort of uh, machining type things. So um, this, this, this particular sprocket um, clips over to the, on the top of the main wheel, the main hub. But what, it, what happens is it, 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 it's a little bit tight. And what I don't want to do is... Um, force it when I come to do the fixings on the inside. So what I've done with this one, um, I've gone around and deburred it and I find that it actually fits reasonably well. So I'm going to do the same with this because this one sits um, flat face um, forward, sorry, uh, sort of rebated face forward. And you have to be careful because if you put that on the wrong way, then it doesn't bind with the track. I mean, it almost suggests or feels like it should be sitting in the rebate, but if you, if you, it's very easy to o you know, overlook that on the instructions. So it's got to be the flat face on the back, and then that way it will lock perfectly into um, the track. But 
at the moment that's not fitting as as, as well as it should do so i'm just going to basically deburr the back of this so it'll sit nice and tightly in that ridge and that's just taking that edge off so that fits really well now this one here yeah that's I'm happy with that so the first thing I'm going to do is put the front face on um, and then very simple in comparison to when you do the wheel build uh, there's there's not that many fixings but you still have the sort of little brass um, couplings to use you've got your m 2.5 and uh, your little 12 mil m 2.5 bolts and nuts and they simply fix through albeit sometimes with a little bit of encouragement actually what I've done there is just needs to line that up is I'm going to do one directly opposite again I think if you try and avoid going around in sequence if you do opposite and opposite at least then it clamps it down without um, making it difficult for you and don't tighten these up too much until you've got pretty much all of them on for some reason that is not going in there but I'll come back to that. So make sure you do them in pairs. First pair, second pair, and so on. It always, um, it always tends to be when the camera's on things get harder to do I'm not sure why it's just uh, classic I think it's just a matter of just cleaning out the machining process again there we go and that's it and then simply turn those over apply some thread locker get your corresponding nuts
opposing sockets. Tightening this up, not too tight at this stage, just want to pull that hub into the sprocket ring. ready to carry on so but before I carry on fixing these I just want to get this sprocket on and then show you that um, you just need to take the sharp edges off the, the cogs themselves so they lock nicely into the tracks it does show you that in the instructions um, when I made this one I did them uh, this particular way I, I put this on first then I went round and did one side turned it did the other side and then did the corresponding uh, sprocket sort of connector or gear wheel so um, I'll just all I'm doing is just taking off the sharp with a flat file it's careful not to take too much it's just to give it a just to be able to s slip into the track As with a lot of the build of this particular tank, and I guess all Armatech tanks, it is just a slow, methodical way of working, but making sure. I mean, it's it's. If you're not in a rush to build this, then you know that that's great. If you want to try and build this, uh, if you if you were the type of person that. What, like I used to be, just impatient and want to see the finished article sooner rather than later, then I, I'd suggest that you um, reconsider buying a, an Armatech tank. This is something for the long run. I said, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of a couple of months into my build now. I, I, I'm enjoying it. On the basis that I'm only doing weekends and, and a couple of evenings, not every weekend either. But I look forward to it and I plan each stage of the build, what I'm going to attempt to do on that particular stage of the build. I do as much research as I possibly can. Although sometimes it just, it just seems that some of the advanced builders on YouTube tend to skip past the bits that... I kind of need a bit of help with. And that's that done. And what you can see on the one I've already built, this little section of track that I've put together. This, I'll put it around the right way. This locks in perfectly. And I guess by filing the edges, that helps with it engaging in the positions. And as I said, if, you, if you're not careful and you put the, the back 
sprocket on the hub the wrong way round. I mean, it looks like it's, you know, you've got the recess there. It kind of, if you weren't really paying attention, I reckon you could put that on there wrong. And then if you try and, you, you can see it doesn't actually, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not the right size and it's not engaging as, as well. And it over sits the edge of the track. Obviously been putting it on the right way round. Put it in the right position. That sits perfectly in line with the track. So I just thought I'd share that with you. So I'm going to carry on building this sprocket and get it ready for painting. I'm going to probably speed this up now. That's the top fixed. We're now going to do the bottom. I've already just put a couple of little fixings in, but these are the um, little button fixings, same gauge 2.5, but they're eight mil button fixings. Again, you know, if you go through the trouble of um, digging these out ahead of the game, then um, it makes life a little bit easier. So I've done two opposing um, fixings already. Um, and I th I'm really pleased that I've um, deburred this because it, it's, it's going in very, very well indeed. So I'm just going to pop that through there, hold it in place, put some of the thread locker on, apply the nut. There's not a lot of space to work with here, but what I find is if you lock that in with a socket using the appropriate Allen key and then just gradually wind that in and that pulls the hub nicely together so I'm going to carry on with this probably speed it up So I'm now just preparing the sprocket hub cap. Um, this is made up of uh, two pieces and uh, these conical shaped nuts. Now from what I can understand, these nuts don't get bolted into anything and they clearly say in the instructions to lock tight or super glue into place. Um, the, uh, the only trouble I've had so far is that, again, with the machining process, this hub cap here, now I've cleaned this up um, and then your sort of brass plate that goes over the top of that um, unless you're prepared to force that onto it and bend it out of shape it doesn't fit so I'm gonna to have to clean this up as I have done with these so I'm gonna very gently uh, hold this and use my deburring tool just to take the edge off the brass piece Turn that round, do the same again. The only reason I'm doing this now is that I want to get these into my paint booth. Um, I want to spray up the sprocket 
and the hubcap to the um, idler wheel so that I can get those on the tank um, and then my next step after that I think is I'm gonna probably go out of sequence and build the track and install the track so I can just do some final tweaks if necessary and I'm gonna come out of shot for a moment and just use my Dremel tool just to clean this edge up because that's ah actually it's gone in lovely now oh, that's in there perfectly so according to sorry according to the uh, instructions these pieces are super glued so I'm just going to apply a very small amount of super glue pop the brass piece into position locate that that's it so press that down the glue's already doing its job now um, from what I can see yeah these these bolts do just get bolted in oh, oh sorry super glued in and I don't think they perform anything other than just a a detailed feature I'm going to pop those in like that. And then I'm going to just turn that upside down on my bench as I did with this one. And as you can see, these are all in. Um, and I'm going to put this on the bench in my little spray booth and um, get that ready to spray and get primed anyway cleaned up and uh, painted so so that's the next bit for me I'm going to uh, paint up these sprockets sorry I keep kicking the camera um, get these sprayed up and get the hubcaps sprayed up the hubcaps for the um, the idler wheels which I've now cleaned up and are I've, all I've done is I've just cleaned that with my, my sort of little circular sander to take that sort of edging off um, and I'm going to prime and paint with the fixings in place because once uh, once this goes on onto its final resting place on the idler I don't want to be trying to pick off and paint the fixings so when they're done I'll very carefully um, fix those into place then they, the sprocket will go on um, and I'm going to have to very carefully read the instructions because um, there is a the sort of the the tapered bush lock um, is something that I have to be extremely careful with. So once I've done this, I'm going to go to the other side of the tank, install the idler wheel. I'll do that in real time, but um, I'm going to go and do some painting. Um, while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I'll do the idler wheel. So I don't want to get anything, any paint on the inside of of this because it will affect how the the uh, taper lock bush goes in. I guess I could probably just pop that on there and paint it without masking it, but I'm not so sure. Hmm. I'm tempted to do that actually. That will help just I'll just pick up what I want to pick up anyway um, I'm not sure I'm really really nervous about sort of getting paint down here so I think I'll probably just do that use that itself the hubcap 
to uh, mask the area that I want to protect. And while I'm waiting for the primer to go off on the base coat, I'll start doing the um, the idler wheels. So I'm using a self-etching primer. Um, typically I'm putting two coats on and then in between coats checking the finish and um, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at painting but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not an expert so you know there's always potential not so much for runs because if you know what you're doing and I'm only using aerosol tins um, and I'm, again I'm just taking my time but just really want to get the finish on this about you know I'm not gonna I sort of it's weird because I the more I'm building this getting into the build of this tank I've seen how people weatherize them and distress them and and you know I, I started off with thinking that's what I want to do but I also think that you know what's wrong with look, making the tank look like it's just come out of the factory so um, that's kind of where I'm going with this at this stage I'm not looking I'm not looking to weather it or anything like that although I can do that and I've done that in the past on other models I've kind of just I kind of like the look of the the clean paint finish it currently is and if I do decide to weather it I can always do that after I've applied all the paint but so I put two coats of primer on um, and then I just of the self etching primer then I sort of look to clean the um, the application up uh, give it one final coat of primer leave that um, I mean it dries it dries ready for the next coat or top coat this particular primer within a couple of hours uh, but I typically leave it overnight and then I start building up the this, the final coat so this will be these are pretty good I can go into the my little paint booth so my paint booth is a tent that I've um, and you you probably seen the photographs in the um, in the uh, sort of painting sequence. I didn't film it because I worry about the camera lens getting um, you know coated in a very thin layer of, of paint. So I didn't film it. I just took photographs through the different stages. So the next time you see these sprockets, you will see them um, probably in a hard photograph or uh, in its finished state with the sort of. Uh, with sort of the, the military colour finished on them um, to match the wheels and the underside of the hub. So I'm going to go off and do that now and I'll see you shortly. Right, so um, I'm going to install the other idler wheel on this side of the tank to match what I've done on this side over here. Um, and I thought I'd do it in real time. So basically I've got the idler wheel, I have the adjustment linkage here have the main idler axle two ball bearings or bearing pieces and all the various fixings I'm going to need just to get me through to this stage um, so the first thing that um, Armatec asks us to do is to super glue the bearings inside these holes so I'll do that now I've, what you must do uh, if you haven't already cleaned these things up prior to painting and you're doing it, I would personally make sure you, you, you do clean them up to make sure the bearings snap into their position as intended. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of super glue on here and then use the nozzle to spread that round. I think, again, I've seen on YouTube people who don't do this, but I, you know, I am following the Armatech instructions. And that goes in that's gone in there nicely I'll do the same this side Just 
going to use my trusted bit of broom handle just to push that into position. And that's in there. That's that. That's the relatively easy piece. Um, I'm now going to just go and zoom the camera in so, into this piece here so that you can see as I pass the components through and how we fix them on. Right, so uh, what I've done here is I went ahead and pre-assembled this linkage system and put the, the bolt through it uh, before I put it into the tank. I just wanted to make sure that when it passes through the aluminium, through the steel, and then back out into the aluminium, it was relatively easy, and it was quite, quite difficult to do that. Um, so I de decided to do it outside of the tank so that when I put it on inside the tank, it's gonna be relatively straightforward. I've also, um, prior to putting this, um, I, I don't know if you can see inside there, but I, 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 I cleaned and sanded out um, this, uh, this sort of hole and also this one here where this sort of small linkage system cut passes through. It's only again because in the manufacturing process, CNC cutting, I guess, you get a lot of deposits. I deburred both sides of the um, ring here uh, and now it passes through beautifully. So um, the first, I mean, I've, I've seen versions of this where there's a washer that goes on and, and what have you, but this particular version, this late variant Tiger, um, this is a 2021, Armatech seem to have changed how they do this. So it's um, once you've got this all cleaned up and, and painted as I have, you simply pass it through and present this through this hole then the linkage mechanism goes on just line up that that hole and the bolt which I've previously assembled as you can see just goes through relatively easy now just by hand And I'll just finish off the last of that with my long armed Allen key. When you're doing this, it, it, it kind of feels it's all a bit loose and a bit, you know, but I, I guess that's part of it. Um, and the other side is a lot, you know, once everything's on it, and I understand that once the tracks are on and the weight is applied uh, from the tracks, then this thing does its job. So that, just flip that over. That's on there nice. And uh, a little bit of thread locker. onto that bolt nut goes on and using the appropriate socket wrench just tighten that up nice and nice and tight final part which is a bit I find a bit strange is the idler adjuster itself so I'll just get that going get it off and running and then you have these bushes here which you are instructed to super glue into position so make sure you do that way ahead of doing this so that the glue has time to go off I know it's super glue but 
um, my experience with metal sometimes it just can take a bit longer to to go off and then that simply sits in position there and by turning the screw so um, I've, the a way to adjust this is the access panel at the back which I put on in early days of the build but I've now taken off so that I can get in there with a, a, an alum key at the point of where when we're going to do the tracks so I can adjust the tracks um, and that's 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 it that's as simple as that is um, once that's all on and in position we then simply put on the the idly wheel slides on from the outside with the holes to secure the the um, hubcap facing out obviously um, and I'm told by fellow youtubers not to worry too much about this because all this will strengthen up once the weight of the track has been applied so that's the idler wheel in position spinning nicely although you can't see it um, and then I guess if I was to adjust this I can see the idler wheel moving forward and back what I'll do is I'll reposition the camera for you to, to show you that in a moment so um, that's it the sprocket is on the tank uh, the idler wheel is on the tank um, I went ahead and um, primed cleaned primed and painted the sprocket wheel and the hubcap to the idler wheel um, and I've installed that just to get um, just to clean that up I haven't used a thread locker on all of the fixings because I have a horrible feeling I might have to be taking this off to do some adjustments uh, later on down the line when I start putting the tracks on so what I did when I was um, waiting for the paint to dry the coats to dry um, three coats of primer I think it was and in three top coats of the final color um, I went ahead and started assembling the tracks and um, I so I made up a small section so I can use to just I, I wanted to test the sprocket fitting um, and then I went ahead and did the full side of one of the sides so this this is um, this is the full length of track quite heavy when it's all assembled reasonably straightforward to put together um, a little bit fiddly a little bit tedious um, you know, again it's just a, a long repetitive uh, exercise but I'm glad I've got one side done and in my next video I will be installing the tracks um, and showing you a little bit more about my technique of getting the, the track pins and the split pins in trimmed and, and folded. So the sprocket uh, itself was um, reasonably straightforward but I was concerned um, because there's a lot of talk on YouTube and, and, and uh, other channels and other uh, Armatech builders about the difficulty in putting this uh, taper lock bush in but in, in fact it was reasonably straightforward uh, so you just follow the instructions from Armatech very very carefully do everything they ask you to do on there and then just arm yourself with a again a really useful piece of wooden dowel the end of my broomstick has come in extremely helpful and uh, you know a lightweight sort of little hammer um, just to be able to nudge this sprocket into its final location and what I did is I just wanted to make sure that it was all lined up so this small section of track that I have here I was able to just pop that and you can see it rolls on as it should do everything works everything as it should so that's all aligned um, I'm really pleased with the alignment of that um, and again I would suggest even though Armatech really don't sort of give you that uh, direction definitely won't make up a section of track uh, wh while you're going to be doing what you know to help you with the installation of the sprocket and then also it gives you a dry run to how long it's going to take you to make these tracks up so that's about it the only other thing I've got to do now is just put the hubcap on the uh, sprocket which is very straightforward I previously painted that while I was painting the sprocket and all the fittings 
So these little cone shaped fittings here, Armatec just asks you to glue these in. I don't think they do anything other than just a feature, a scale feature of the actual um, tank itself. Um, and then just, I'm just going to slowly just wind that back into position. I'm not going to over tighten it. Um, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, because I've got all these little hub caps for the wheels that I painted previously as part of the painting exercise and they're laying around so I just want to get rid of them. I'm not going to thread lock them in, I'm just going to screw them in sort of hand tight and I'm, I might just give that a bit of a, an encouragement because So these will go on now just so that I don't lose them and I'm not as I said I'm not thread locking them on um, don't know what it is as soon as the camera comes on I'm all fingers and thumbs camera shy camera nervous whatever um, but uh, these just go on I don't want to lose them they're, they're in my tray at the moment um, and it's the sort of thing that knowing my luck I'd end up losing one of them or sweeping up and getting rid of them so I'm going to carry on doing this um, I'm also going to put the uh, the hubcap on the idler wheel on the other side of the tank which is out of shot um, and the fixings which I've previously painted as well um, so that uh, I don't have to worry about it I mean I will be touching this up once it's all finished because inevitably once the tracks go on um, the you know the paint will get damaged but you know generally speaking I'm, I'm quite happy um, with the, the the sort of progress of this so my next uh, task for my tank build is finishing off the assembly of the tracks and then installing the tracks on the tank and then what I want to try and do is take the tank off the off the jack system I've got it on and then just do a sort of a, a rolling test on the bench just to make sure the tracks are rolling correctly in the wheels so I'll see you again again it's Tony trying to build a tank if you like this thumbs up or subscribe